Imagine a house. Imagine this house with solar panels on its roof and a big battery in its basement. Residential solar panels just need common elements like silicon, copper, aluminum, and glass. No exotic or rare elements. The battery can be recycled EV lithium-ion batteries or lead-acid batteries. Maybe even in-ground thermal batteries or gravity batteries. Whatever energy storage type you like within reason. The house can also have a vertical wind turbine as a treat. Now, imagine all the houses with this system. Energy collection on the roof, energy storage in the basement or under the yard. Imagine all the buildings have this too, with more solar panels and bigger batteries. All the houses and buildings are connected into the grid. During the day, the house charges its battery that's also powering the house. If it's a sunny day or a windy night and the house is still generating electricity with its battery full, the extra energy is put into the grid to help charge the batteries of other houses. Same with the buildings. There will always be houses and buildings not using very much energy because people aren't home or just aren't using that much power, so their energy will primarily go into the grid. The entire city is now one big power generator and battery. Peak energy loads are still an issue, I hear you say, and you are correct. So imagine large dedicated batteries placed around the city. These batteries can be big so they can be lithium ion battery arrays in warehouses, big thermal tanks, water towers, or even artificial lakes with generators downstream. If the lake is big enough, stock it with fish, have a good time. When the city is generating more energy than it's using, extra energy goes into these big batteries, charging the lithium ion arrays, pumping water into the lake, or heating up the big tanks. When energy production is lower, let's say on cloudy days or shorter days in the winter, the batteries supply extra energy to the grid. What about those times when the sun and wind might not be frequent enough to keep pace with energy demands? Fear not, dedicated power plants are still a thing. Turbines and rivers will be generating energy 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, regardless of the sun or wind. Small modular nuclear power plants can provide consistent energy in all conditions. Since the city is a big power plant and one big battery, the reactors don't need to be that big. They just supplement extra power when needed, keeping them small, safe, and of little concern. On days when the city is generating enough power to meet its needs, the dedicated power stations can use their extra energy to produce hydrogen. Clean hydrogen for use in industry, such as steel production or ammonia for fertilizer. Now, imagine a disaster strikes the city. A bad storm comes in and damages power infrastructure. In a normal city, this causes massive blackouts to hundreds, thousands, or even millions of people. However, no blackouts occur. Every house and building has batteries, with energy storage disseminated around the city. Damage to the grid just means that the isolated sections of the city continue generating, sharing, and storing energy as normal, giving ample time to repair the damage to the grid without anyone losing power. Now, imagine you get your energy bill. What energy bill? Your house generates most of its own electricity, with the rest coming from other people's houses and buildings. The power companies run the power plants, but they make money selling hydrogen. There is no way to charge you for your energy use as it's all decentralized. The energy companies are now mad. They cannot meter the sun. The energy companies do not like this idea. A reliable decentralized grid would mean clean air and stable energy, but it's not profitable. And we already know how energy companies feel about what's the right thing to do versus what's the profitable thing to do.